Center at 7 p.m. And if you're interested, please sign up and see me after service. Hey everyone, Chris here with Lifeline Connections Alumni. Coming up June 20th is our huge uh, summer fundraiser, our summer jailbreak. So join us at the Face Center 430 for a barbecue, followed by Pastor Bill's service, and then all kinds of fun activities. There'll be dunk take, pie throwing, and great raffle prizes. So join us Saturday, June 20th. Thanks. Hello, Faith Center Exchange Church. My name is David Taub, and I'm here at the beautiful Exchange Recovery Center on Highway 99 and 78th Street. This is the location of our Nurturing Parents and Substance Abuse Treatment and Recovery class. It's offered the first and third Thursdays of every month, and it is an exciting, interactive, court-approved class. We learn things like healthy new boundaries and how to parent after addiction. Please come out and join us. I'm Shane. I'm William. And we're both members of Recovery 360. We meet Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the Exchange Recovery Center at 7 o'clock on Highway 99 and 78th Street. Come show your support. Get some. Welcome, Faith Center so. Exchange. How are you guys tonight? Good, good, good. Ooh. Anybody warm? I'm warm. We should have the sprinkler system spray everybody. Missed you. <clears throat> I want to welcome some special guests in the house yeah, tonight. Yeah. So we have pastors Harlan and Jerry Madsen here. You guys want to stand up? Good to have you guys. Yes. <clears throat> yes, and their lovely friends Greg and Corey. You guys want to stand up as well? These guys, yes. They're visiting. They're visiting here from Rockland, California. They brought the weather. They did. They brought the sun, so you have them to thank. So they're um, our friends. Yeah, so they, they've been on a whirlwind tour with us this weekend, but they're, they're uh, up here because they want to know what God is doing up here to see what they could do to duplicate it in California. So, yeah. yeah. Yay, God. Yeah. Yay, God. So Good Craig God. and Corey run their Celebrate Recovery group that's been running for like the last eight years, right? So, yeah, God's doing some cool stuff. So that's we're glad cool. you guys are with us tonight. So let's welcome our online audience tonight. We have Tina McIntyre in Arizona, Ken Otten in Texas, yeah. Kate Witt from Montana, ladies at the Sober in the Sands retreat, Tracy, Angie, and Sarah. You guys and, be good. Yes, and Donnie and Heather Reichard on vacation at the beach, and Janet and Larry are home in Longview. So hi, everybody. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, welcome, you guys. Jay, can you guys hear me okay? I sound kind of, I sound like good. my teenage sound, son. Sound awesome. <laughs> no, you, you're not. You sound awesome. Yeah, so JV, you can be dismissed. Kids? All right. <laughs> See you guys. Okay. Uh, clean and sober birthdays. Yeah, let's celebrate some clean and sober birthdays tonight, huh? All right, so anybody celebrating under a week? Please stand so we can honor you. We want to honor you. Honor you. We want to honor you. This is, this is the place to be. Under a week. All right. That's seven there it days. is. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Right there. Good job. You can do it. You're our hero. Great. Good job. All right. 30 days tonight. Anybody celebrating 30 right here? Good job. How about 60 days tonight? 60, 60 wow. 60 over here. Awesome. Over there, over there. Awesome. Awesome. 90 days. 90. 90, 90. Awesome. Over here. Right here. Good job. Way to go, guys. How about six months? Anybody with six months tonight? Right there. You are so cute, Lori. I love you. So cute. Nine months. How about nine months? Awesome. Good job. Yay. It's like all the birthdays are on this side of the house. Anybody with a year tonight? Awesome. Yay. Anna. Yay, Anna. Congratulations, honey. Anybody more than a year? Anybody? Right here? Five. <laughs> Five years. Five years. Ten, nine. Nine. Awesome. Woo. 
Three. Three. Awesome. Good job. Oh, oh there you Two. go. Two years, awesome. Jason. Good job, brother. Way to go, bud. You rock. Good, good, good. job. You guys are awesome. So how many of you guys are going to join us up in Kelso Longview tomorrow? Yes? Do you guys forget? We are starting Exchange way more Recovery hands Service. Last week. Uh, what? What is the deal? What? Are Just we because it be got nice out, you guys aren't showing up? Alone tomorrow? We're going. <clears throat> okay, so it's, do you guys, next, this coming Friday, we're starting this recovery service up in Cal Salon View. Yeah, they need it, right? They need recovery really bad up there. Yes. So um, it'll be on Friday nights at 7 p.m., and it starts this Friday, and we need to get the word out. We need to pass out all these cool flyers and invite people to... And we're going to canvas. Yes, tomorrow. we're going to canvas and so. pray oh, the Holy Spirit to draw people yeah. to the church. So you get, we need some help tomorrow. So um, church service starts at 10 o'clock up there. Pastor Seth and Kate will be bringing the word, and we're going to do kind of a potluck. So there's food. Does that do anything for you, food? And well, then gonna, we're going to hit make the streets. Some phone calls. I'll make so, some phone calls tonight. You're going to make some phone yeah. calls? You're going to call yeah. your people? Yep. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. So kids camp, we've got kids camp um, information at the information center. Yes, you guys can clap about kids camp. Kids camp's great. It's amazing. I got kicked out of kids camp when I was a kid. Oh, it's, it's almost, almost full. full. Okay. So, is that right? Wow. Okay. Okay. So we've got just a few spots just left. Ages 8 to 13. Um, th- are you still taking the down, $30 down to hold yeah. the spot? So if you want to get your kids in, it's an amazing camp. And wh- the first time our kids didn't want to go, and I'm like, okay, you go one time, you just try it. And you do not have to go back. No, we can't keep them back. And now they, yeah, they were so excited. It's just the best camp. So it, you guys want to sign your kids up for that. So I'm going to share some and new then, news. Uh, the new news is... Uh, you, t- you share we, that one. I'm going to share this one. We're, uh, we moved the signs over this week from Salvation Army to Bob's Rentals. We got yep. that <laughs> So we're going to be trying to open as soon as possible. So if anybody has any spare time this week, give me a call. There's lots to do. Yes. And uh, then also we just signed, we're signing papers today on a, on a new house. It's a, called Number the Serenity six. House. It's going to be a second, third phase house for ladies graduating out of the Grace Lodge that yeah. they can go there and, and have a little more freedom yes. and become the women of God. Or live out their recovery in thir- so. phase three. It'll be, so. It's a beautiful house, too. It, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We don't have to do anything, so that's I am great. so thankful for this house. <laughs> All right. You guys want to stand up? Stay, say hi to somebody real quick. No smoke breaks. Hurry back because we're going to get into the Word. Okay, we're gonna, we're ready. Are you guys ready? We're talking about the, the seduced soul, so run the tape.
Doesn't that just sound like something leaving your body? <laughs> right? You know, um, the coolest part about, I, I believe, about this ministry, and I know uh, Vicki would uh, agree, it's my turn to talk. My turn to talk, so no side talk. Just like at a meeting, they'll escort you out. Um, thank you. Um, where was I? You can't do that to me. I lose my train. Okay. The most exciting part about this ministry is, is seeing God transform um, lives. And um, I want to just show you just a, a snippet. This isn't all of them, but it's just a, a, just a small portion of all the people that are involved in Face of Hope. And, and I want you to just check this out because these were seduced souls that have been set free um, by the blood of Jesus. And so just go ahead and run that to
broken So I can be healed Cause I'm so callous And now I can't feel I wanna run to you With heart wide open Make me broken planet that can do that to a person you, you can't come close it's it's only what god in heaven does and um the the most exciting thing about this is it's a free gift and there isn't a person in this room but what you can have that and and um, what we're going to talk tonight about is the the last of this series and it's it's a really heavy subject and i want to just bless you i want to just pray for you right now because i just believe that the holy spirit wants to deal with some people tonight um, on a level that I, I, th I think you've never really been dealt with on before. And um, I believe that in this room there's going to be some people that are going to make some huge strides and, and monumental moves in their life that, that is going to change the direction and the outcome. And uh, so if, if you could just stay with me for the next um, few moments and no moving around. Father, we come to you right now and we just pray that your Holy Spirit would have free reign. I come against any distractions in this room, um, anything that might pull us away from what you want to say to our hearts right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Exodus um, chapter 20 says, verse 1 through 4 said, And God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the meth house, out of the heroin den, out of the tavern, out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery to drugs and alcohol, slavery to addiction, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. 
Do you realize this is just as true for us tonight as it was back then? Because God is a jealous God, and he pulled you out of the fire. He set you right with him, and he wants more than anything else to imprint your life and make a huge difference in everything that goes on in your life tonight. And our souls <clears throat> were wired, <clears throat> am I catching a cold? Wired to worship God. I don't know if you realize that tonight, but when these songs were sung, um, the reason we sing these songs is it's not just to, to listen to the band. It's, it's to say, God, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. I, you're amazing, the fact that I'm here tonight and I'm not back there where I used to be. And that's, that's why we worship, and we were wired to worship. And anytime we're drawn away or seduced by counterfeit gods, we're, we're never totally satisfied. And you and I know what those counterfeits are. Every one of us in this room have a counterfeit God that, that has tried to establish itself in our life. The, the drugs, the alcohol, the addictions, the, the relationships, the men, the women, the, all the things, the, the, the monetary things, whatever it could be. And, and we can have our lives full of so many things, but, but how many of you know that we can feel still, em, still feel empty? We can, we can have all these different things and we can still feel empty, right? And I, I, I notice that, that when people come into recovery, they're, they're the most empty that they've ever been, but they're the most full that they've ever been. You know what I'm saying? Because you've, you've burned every bridge, you've done everything, you, you've discarded uh, family members, you've discarded homes and cars and all this stuff, and, and you're at the bottom, but, but you come in and, and you're empty, but you're full because the presence of God shows up and it does something supernatural in your life and you're going, wow, this is better than any hit of anything I've ever had because it's real, right? And it, it, it's transforming and it does something to you. And, and then all of a sudden we, we start that road and we're doing great and we're having fun and, and we're realizing that God's just doing stuff. He's getting us jobs and he's getting us licenses and he's getting you off DOC and he's getting you all these things. And, and all of a sudden we get seduced by something that takes us off track. And we're no different than what went on back there in the Old Testament. And the things that this world gives us never satisfies. But there are all these things that will try to take us away. And, and I want you to just check out this next scripture. It says you saw, this is, this is the, the poster child of ADD in, in Deuteronomy right here. This, listen to this scripture. It's, it's incredible. When I read this, I'm going, whoa, they can't even pay attention for a second. They're worse than me. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Herob out of the fire. Um, you saw nothing when the, the Lord spoke to you. In other words, we were laid bare. We, we saw nothing. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman or like an animal or earth or any bird that flies in the air. I mean, think of all these things that's going through their mind. What could we possibly worship, right? And or any like any creature that moves along the ground or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun and the moon and the stars and the squirrel and all this, all the heavenly array do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things that the Lord your God has apportioned to all nations under heaven. And then it says, but as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of iron smelting furnace. Flashback. Where did he bring you from? Where did he bring you from to here? Some of you can't even believe you're sitting in a church building tonight. How many, how many, be honest, how many of you are there? You can't, look at that. You can't even believe you're sitting in a church building tonight. Why are you here? Because God is drawing you to himself. And he's pulling you in by his spirit. And, and it's the same thing is happening in a rippling effect all across this county and all across Callitz County. And, and God is beginning a revival of people that, that want to do something. And it says, but as far as you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace of drug addiction and out of Egypt to be the people. Listen to this. To be the people of his inheritance as you now are. <laughs> wow, that's good. Because you are part of his inheritance, right? You are of his inheritance and you are now. It, it, that means that we got it all now. We don't have to wait till later. And it, 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 sometimes I think, you guys, we, we think that we've got to measure up 
Aren't you glad that you don't have to measure up tonight? But you can just walk in here and take the inheritance that's yours? We think we should, we think when we worship that, uh, do you get past the fact that, that God sees you in an amazing light and you don't have to shrink back and that, that God's not mad at you, God's not ticked at you, God wants you to just come to him with what you are, but we are seduced into all kinds of things. Remember the scripture, Mark, it says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Remember that? I want to have some guests come up tonight and um, uh, guys come on up um, that I've talked to you before. Um, I'm going to have Monique and Kayla. Is Kayla here? Woo! Kayla and uh, Andrew. And, um, Why don't you sit in the middle? We'll try and brighten things up. Put some gals on the side of you. There you go. I won't need this because I have a... You know, I'm, I'm excited about um, you guys having you here tonight. And, and um, I, I, I've asked each one of you to share a little bit about, about your story. Sorry, guys. Um, I want to make sure they can see. Um, I'm going to start with um, Kayla. I, I remember um, a little bit about your story is, is when you came um, to the Lord and, and uh, you suffered. Uh, just tell us a little bit about it. You'll tell it better than me. <laughs> like about my surgery? Yeah. Just to, uh, when we first met you, you were in a hospital bed filled full of tubes. Um, when PB and Vicky first met me, you guys came, I think, one of the first times. I went to the hospital three different times, and I didn't want to change. The last time they came and see me, I had, like, 20 different tubes hooked up to me. Um, I had a 2% chance of living, and I didn't, at that time, the second time I went to the hospital and they see me, I knew what was going on, and I tried it, but the third time, I didn't know what was going on. I woke up. Um, they told my parents to make funeral arrangements. I had to have open-heart surgery. I had to have a valve replaced. Um, and when I woke up, I didn't know what was going on. All my parents told me is that they were sorry. And I thought I was, I didn't know I was in a hospital. I was freaked out. But um, after that, um, I had to relearn how to walk, talk, eat, drink, everything. I couldn't even, um, they tried to take the ventilator off of me and my lung collapsed and I stopped breathing and I almost died a second time in the hospital just from everything. Um, and and then, what, what, um, what took you there? What was your drug? Heroin and meth. Heroin and meth, okay. And then after that, you got out of the hospital, and you were seduced away again. And you were seduced away, and, and tell, tell us about the mall. <laughs> so I, I um, I'll, I'll just say, I went to church for a little bit. I tried to stay clean. I stayed clean for a couple of months. And then after the hospital visit, I relapsed um, in, I think, October. And I was... Everybody was trying to get a hold of me. I didn't want to answer anybody's calls. You know, it disappeared. And then I'm coming out of the mall bathroom. And I run into PB and Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not look good at all. She was tore back. <laughs> Their kids still tell me to this day, you look so much better than when we see you at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, it was a couple weeks later, and um, PB, Vicky, I told them I was ready to go to detox, and they helped me get into detox. And um, I went to Lifeline, I went to detox, and after that, I've been clean ever since. How many months you got? In 10 days, I was seven months. Sweet. Awesome. Andrew? 
You got some sun today or you're nervous? Yeah, I got some sun today. That's okay. I didn't think you were that red just sitting up here. Go ahead and just share your heart. Um, Andrew, you, you relapsed. You, you called us, needed some help, and uh, just take it from there. Well, uh, you know, like when I was living in Kings Pond, Oxford, um, you know, I just wasn't really ready. You know, I would tell people that, you know, I'm doing the recovery deal, and I really wasn't. I was just miserable because I was still angry and still had a lot of things going on in my heart and my mind, just that chaos. And, um, you know, I never really felt like I was really still worth of anything. You know, I always felt like I heard my dad's voice in the back of my mind. And, you know, always constantly remembering about the past and just still living the past. And I just couldn't really find a way to let go. And, um, you know, I relapsed. Um, I remember hearing about um, Pastor Bill's uh, sermon that he preached a week before um, I had relapsed. It was about not letting it end this way. And when I relapsed and, you know, I was walking down the side of the road because I was just going to throw it all away and just go back to what I knew. And, you know, I started remembering a lot about what he was talking about, about not letting it end this way. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to let it end this way. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to live a happy life. And um, So next morning, um, I called Pastor Bill and we went out and had a coffee and, um, for me, that was, uh, it was definitely quite an experience. For me, it was, uh, it was like, I remember talking to somebody about it. It was like a divine appointment or something like that that God had put, you know. And after being here in this program and doing what I really need to do and really working on myself and revisiting a lot of the past, you know, with the child abuse and sexual abuse when I was a kid, you know, um, after revisiting that, coming to the altar and just, you know, telling God, okay, I'm really done. Like, I am done with this chaos. I'm tired of feeling like a worthless piece of crap. I'm tired of screwing everything up, everything I touch, and I just want my family back in my life. I want to live a happy life. Like, I need you more than anything right now. And what happened was just, I'll never forget that feeling that I had, just that presence, that peace and that warmth, you know, it was, it was almost like, you know, I always had a dad there, but I just didn't want to accept it, you know, and take it in. And ever since I've been here, you know, I came, I remember coming back and um, I remember Pastor Rose talking about making a comeback. You know, I feel like I've made a comeback because I sit here with seven months again. Yeah, you know, I sit here with seven months again. I feel a lot better today. And it's because I let God in my life and let him take control and just let him guide my path. And yes, I've still gone through some obstacles during this last seven months, but because I've let him in and let him do the work for me, you know, things just fall into place super fast. You know, like I've never really had a relationship with my dad and today we have an amazing relationship today. You know, awesome. I don't hate him anymore. You know, we have a good relationship today and it's all because of God and putting Pastor Bill in my, in my path and you know, this church, you know, meeting all these special people here, you know, it's, I couldn't ask for anything better, you know, like I, I'm just super happy today and I feel free and I don't feel like I'm stuck in those chains anymore and it's because I just gave my life. Good job. Good job. Good job. Seven months. Awesome. Seven months. Monique. been able 
to, you know, I had abandonment issues, I had codependency issues, my father was never around, and when I finally did meet him, um, you know, I was actually evidence that he had been cheating, and I got thrown into it, and, um, you know, just treated like crap, always told that I would never amount to anything, um, you know, just unsupportive, and um, I just felt like I was never worthy, you know, inadequate, had no self-confidence, and when I put down drugs and alcohol, I could manage to do that, but I would still cling to a relationship or a man to make me feel like somebody or like fill me up, you know, make me feel like a whole person. And you know, I remember working through it and I came up to the altar one night and it was me and Vicky or it might've been me and Shannon, you know, but I just prayed to God and I can't remember what song was playing. Do you remember? It was maybe set a fire in my soul. It was something, but um, man, it was like, I just prayed to God and I, I asked him, you know, fill me up Lord with your strength and your love and your power and you know, and he did. And that obsession to have a man in my life got lifted, wow. you know, and he just, you know, today I'm happy. I don't lay in bed, you know, feeling alone or miserable or inadequate, you know. I have a Heavenly Father that loves me no matter what, and I always meet His expectations. Awesome. Wow. Good job. How much time you got? I'll have nine months. Awesome. Awesome. Good job. You guys did great. Go ahead and take a seat. There's no better sermon than hearing um, what, what God has done. And if you're here tonight and um, you're still doubting, um, there's no reason to doubt. God has you. God wants to take control of your life. He wants to set you free. Um, he did it for them. He did it for countless people in this auditorium tonight. And he can do it for you. And I think... Um, how do we dethrone the idols of our soul? How do we take, and I'm going to just wrap this up in about five minutes, and, and then you're going to have an opportunity um, to just experience uh, a mind blower. It'll, it'll blow your mind. Um, so stick around. Don't go for a smoke break. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be crazy. Um, first thing we've got to do is we've got to identify the idols of our soul. What popped up in your mind right now? What, what are the idols of your soul? What are the things that you've put in that place? Um, you've put God in there, and at one point, he was up here, um, but all of a sudden, the things that seduced, and, and some of you tonight are, are just this close to a relapse. Um, you're, you're, I can feel it in this room tonight that you're entertaining, um, and, and that, that, that bag is calling you, and it's, it's trying to seduce you and pull you back, um, because that's the only satisfaction that you've ever felt. And that's the only thing that's ever lifted the, the load, that's, that's taken away the heaviness of your soul, that's taken away the restlessness, that's taken away the, the torture of your soul. And, and God wants you to look into his eyes tonight. And he wants, you to, he wants you to go the distance. He wants you to go the next step. And he wants you to get confirmation that he is, like Monique said, your heavenly father. And I don't have to um, do anything else. Or he already has me in the palm of his hands. And, and it says in the scriptures that, that we have to identify those things. And then the second thing is we need to tear down our idols. And I, we're going to tear down some idols tonight in this place. And you see, God doesn't ask you to manage your idols. I'm just here to tell you. He's not here to say, just move them around on the shelf and put this over here and it'll still be there. No, he says, tear them down. And I don't know about you, but I want to tear down the things that come between me and God. And, and that's what God wants you to do tonight. He wants you to, to obliterate them. He wants you to get rid of them. He wants you to, to, to take care of it once and for all. And the, the, the thing that rings true in each one of these people that shared up here is God became first and everything else became second. And, and once God became on the throne, um, everything else sort of lined up. And isn't that amazing that it says that in the Word of God and it's true? What a concept. Um, he asked us to tear them down. And Judges, it says, and it says, In the same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, and the, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar to Baal, and cut down the Asher pole beside it. Then, then listen to this. So he's telling him, Go out and tear all this stuff down that, that has been false. 
And then he says, then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God. And tonight, we're going to build a proper kind of altar to the Lord our God. We're going to build an altar that, that lasts. We're going to build something that says, then it says, go, it says, um, to the Lord your God on top of his height using the wood. And, and this is what I want to get to you tonight. If you don't get anything else, get this. Using the wood of the Asher pole that you cut down, offer the second bowl as a burnt offering. So what he's doing there is, Using the stuff that has been a torment to you, build and then cut it down. And then, so my question to you tonight is what can you build out of the altars that you have torn down in your life? Can you, you can build on that because now you have been set free by the power of God and you're able to build now on that, on the, all of the testimonies tonight were about the past that they've put behind them, and now they've built on that, and they've gone forward, and they're, they're living in the power of what God has done. And, and you see, um, we have been seduced into worshiping counterfeit things in our life. And, and there, I'm sure, Monique, there's, a time, there's, there's times in your life where, where something comes in and tries to pull you back into what you knew that was familiar. Um, Andrew, I'm sure that there's times that, that you're, you're frustrated at work or there's, there's things that are mounting up and, and you feel like, man, I, if I could just get free from what I'm feeling right now. Kayla, I, I know that there's, there's been some hardships in your life this last couple of weeks. She's lost friends and, and to, to overdose and, and there's been all kinds of things. And, and, but what we need to do is, is take those things that you've torn down in your life and then build a new life. And that's what God wants you to do. And sometimes our lives are so full of, of things in our lives that, that, that we, but we, we still feel empty. I think of um, Mark, um, the rich young ruler, and, and, and Jesus would say this to you tonight. He said, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looks at you tonight and he loves you. And you may be sitting in this place tonight and feel like, man, I'm, I'm a pretty unlovable person. The stuff that I've done, the places I've gone, and all the different things. But just like that, and, and then he said to them, and I knew that this is going to get heavy. One thing you lack, he said, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Them come follow me. Go and give up addiction. Go and give up the old life. Go and give up the men that you've tried to fill that spot with go go give up the women that that you've tried to to put on that place to where you you've built that up and that's the only thing you're following go go give up all of those things and, and he says one thing you lack he said where are you tonight his soul was seduced in closing tonight you ready for the the icing on the cake. It's the best part. I've shared this scripture with you before many times, but I, I really believe that it's, it's applicable for tonight. It says, so don't you see that... Is everybody listening? Don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? Some of you are still doing it, the old do-it-yourself. You're white-knuckling it. You're faking it till you make it. That's... That's baloney. <laughs> you see, there's nothing in it for us. Nothing at all. The best thing to do is to give it a decent burial. Some of you need to have a funeral here tonight. I'm serious. Get on with your new life. <laughs> God's Spirit beckons. You know what that means? God's Spirit is calling you out right now. <laughs> Some of you have been called out before, but not like this. <laughs> there are things to do and places to go. Longview, Kelso, Clark County Jail. You see, the resurrection life that you receive from God is not some timid, grave-tending life. It's it's adventurously expecting, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? What's next, Daddy? Some of you don't even have a Daddy. 
You don't have that father figure in your life. But you can go to God tonight and say, God, what's next for me? What do you have in store for me? God's spirit. Catch this part. God's spirit touches our spirit. Can you feel it? Tonight in this place, God's spirit is touching everyone's spirit in here. If you'll allow him. Some of you still have a wall up. And we're going to tear that down. And he confirms who we really are. (laughs) Do you know who you really are tonight? We know who he is. And we know who we are. Father and children. And we know that we are coming. We know we are going to get what's coming to us. And a lot of you stop right there. And think it's chaos and mayhem and judgment and condemnation and guilt and shame. But he says, what's coming is an unbelievable inheritance. You see, we go through exactly what Christ goes through. And if, if we go through the hard times with him, then we are certainly going to go through the good times with him. And the good times are tonight. You see, for some of you tonight, something has seduced your soul, has pulled you away from God's extraordinary life that he has stored up for you, and he's just waiting to give it to you. And he has an endless amount. And so if there's somebody here tonight, as we usually share this picture of Jesus, and he's standing at the door, and... He's saying tonight to you, I want to take care of that thing that's trying to seduce you away from my love for you. And he wants you to give in and say, God, I'm going to open the door and no longer am I going to be seduced away and taken away by the things of this world or the old past. And so if you're here tonight and you'd say, Pastor Bill, I I want to open that door. Maybe you've done this already, um, but you need tonight, you need to reopen that door. I'll I'll bring, Vicki will get this side and I'll get this side and going to tear some things down. Are you guys ready to tear some stuff down? Re- rebuild. Good job. There you go. Hey, hey brother. Some of you right now, your heart's going pitter-patter and you're thinking, man, I don't know if I could do this. Why wouldn't you do this? Why, why, wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you just say, God, I, I need to give everything I am to you tonight? There you go, brother. I'll, I'll tell you what. If you try this for 30 days and you're not totally satisfied, I'll give you all your pain and suffering back. How's that? That's a, that's a guarantee, right? I'm going to tear, I can feel it. I can feel the walls coming down. I can feel some stuff going. I, I can feel it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy up in here in a minute. You see, God is faithful. You heard three testimonies tonight, and, and this, this place is full of people that, that have the same testimony, and, and they've, they've torn down things, and tonight they're not going to be seduced anymore to those things. And, and what's going to happen is there's going to be an army of people going out from this place that's just going to, do amazing things for the kingdom of God. So everybody that took a card, is everybody hearts clear or anybody else out there? Baby, can you run one to this gal right over here? I love it when that, that last Holy Spirit nudge. <laughs> okay, back here in the back, baby. Oh, 
I'm going to ask each one of you now that, that took one of those cards, I want you to just come up front. And you're going to say, well, I don't want to go up front. Well, you're going to come up front. And uh, you're going to come up front and you're, you're going to let somebody pray for you. And, and you're not alone tonight because God is here and, and he's going to do some, he's going to tear some things down that. Pastor Glenn and Teresa, can you come up? And baby, can you come up? And, um, Bill and, and any of, anybody else that wants to come and, and lay hands on people and pray for people behind them. Um, God is doing some cool stuff in here tonight. We're a little bit over time, but this air conditioned in here is too hot outside anyway, so don't, don't worry about it. You know, I am so proud of you guys for stepping out Remember at the beginning of this service, I said this is going to be a monumental moment for a lot of people in this place. This is your monumental moment. When the devil comes and he tries to attack you, you need to point back to this day, to this time right here where you stood in the presence of God and you declared no more. This is my time. And uh, the best is yet to come. It is. I'm, I'm guaranteeing the best, isn't it, Andrew? The best is yet to come. I was thinking about, as Pastor Bill was speaking about, at the beginning of the service, he said something about, tell the devil something. And listen to everybody out here in the congregation, because I think this is a word for us tonight. The byproduct of the devil's voice is depression. When you, hear, when you're de when you fight depression in your life, the, not God has been speaking to you, but the devil himself has been speaking to you. The byproduct of the devil's voice is depression. I feel like there's more people that need to come and just give their hearts to the Lord. Come up here if you're if you're if you're not done. I don't, I don't know why I've, I've never said this. I don't know, but there's more people that need to come. The byproduct the byproduct of listen to me now. This is important because you're getting it now. The That's byproduct good. of depression or the byproduct of the devil's voice is depression. If you're fighting that, come on right now. Come on right now. If you're fighting depression, the byproduct of the devil's voice That's is depression. Good. The Good. byproduct of the devil's voice is depression. He's telling you you can't make it. He's telling you you're no good. He's telling you you're unworthy. And I'm telling you, you're just as good as... It's not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus done. And he's made us righteous. You don't have to earn the Lord's love. He loves you no, in, in, in spite of everything that we've done. Anybody else? There's, I know there's more people that have come. Probably need to take a card just to remind you of that. If you just came up, lift your hand. Let's take a card right here. There's just more. I just feel like there's more people that needed to come tonight. Let's lift one hand up to heaven and just say this with me. Say, Father God, you are my Father. I take you as my God. You said you'd receive me if I come to you. You would never turn me down. So I'm coming to you now, Lord, to place my life in your hands. I'm now yours and you're mine. Be that father to me that I never had. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now listen, 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 one more time, one more time. If you fight this week and depression tries to come upon you, listen to that voice because he's the father of lies. That means the voice that's speaking to you is not God's will and, he's, and it'll be just the opposite will come to pass. If depression follows that, whatever that voice is speaking to you, you'll say, wait a minute, that's not God speaking to me. That's the devil. So he's the father of lies, so he's lying to you. Amen? Amen. We, we love you guys. Kelso, this next week, 7 o'clock, Friday night. We love you guys.